Alright guys, I'm going to teach you how to mess with the timing windows in Eternum. So, kind of there's a few different ways to access this option, but I'm just going to go through all of them. They're all kind of really similar. So, if you're in-game, you can change the setting right here. You have Judge Difficulty. The default is 4, it's the easiest. And then uh, most other people, if they change it from 4, they'll go to 5. And 7 is the other common one. Uh, the other values are also useful, but, I mean, Justice is basically impossible to play on. Um, the reason why you would change Judge, judge Difficulty, it's um, pretty much just for feedback. It doesn't change how the game plays too much, um, besides combo breakers. Um, but objectively, it's the same game. Uh, but I use Judge 5, so this is simply where you would change it until death. Um, if I go to Rebirth real quick, you will see that the option is present in Rebirth as well. And it is in the settings menu, right there, in your face. So, uh, that's how you would change it here. You can also double enter and you'll find it here as well. It's mostly the same menu. Um, <clears throat> now if you wanted to get into a little bit more detail here, uh, let's say you finish a, finish a score, and now you're on the results screen. And I set the score using Judge 5, but I want to see what it is on different judges. So I can hit the minus key, or the plus key, to change the judgment that shows up. Um, and I'm using the minus and plus key only because I've bound these keys to those buttons, and that, that's what they are bound as is default. It's the effect up and effect down keys. It's the same button you use to change your rate. Um, so that's how you would basically just change what the uh, displayed judge is in the result screen. Uh, you can also <coughs> you can also do the same thing with uh, online scores and your other local scores and stuff. And it should all just kind of work out. Uh, now the only... Uh, there's, there's another little thing here. So in the most recent updates, we've added uh, custom windows. And you can activate them by clicking on the, uh, the percentage. And it shows this, this new system. And then when, once you're in the custom windows mode, uh, anytime you press plus and minus, it doesn't change the judge, it changes the custom window you have selected. So the only ones that I've programmed by default are the DP Judge 4, Wife 2 Judge 4, and the OD10. Um, now I'm going to show you how to make your own, because these are, these are customizable. Uh, however, they're not customizable from within the game. Uh, so, all you've got to do is open the install folder of the game. This is where the game runs from. You to find your themes folder, find the fallback, go into scripts, and it's going to be down here. Custom Windows Config. Now, this file and all this green text, at least on my screen, it's green, um, kind of explains to you all the things you need to know about creating your own custom window here. Um, what you can actually see is written here in the comment is, uh, I believe this is Judge 4DP or it's some kind of non-existent judge. Yeah, that like this, this one right here just doesn't even make sense, but. Um, so if we look at the configuration that's already pre-made, basically it's asking you to create a table. And you have to give it a visual name, and then you uh, have to set up the names of the judgments. Here you can either determine uh, whether your scoring is based on a function, like a continuous function, like a wife, or you can uh, base it on the judgment windows themselves, like an uh, older version of scoring system DP or OD. Uh, this changes the milliseconds timing of the windows. Um, this, this changes the worth of hold notes, whether you hold them, drop them, or completely miss them. Uh, this also applies for rolls at the same time. Um, this this uh, lets you determine whether or not mines are worth anything. Um, this, this determines the maximum amount of score you could possibly get in a file, basically. Um, it's used in conjunction with these other settings to give you your 
result score. Um, by default in our game, a tap is worth two. Everything's worth two. Holds are worth... Um, the hold head here is specifically talking about the tap of the hold head, not the hold itself. Um, and mines are typically worth nothing. Uh, so this is for DP Judge 4. For in, in Judge 4, holds are worth a lot extra. It was actually... Um, it was two for the tap and another little bit for the whole hold, which is... That's kind of why we migrated away from DP. But anyways, um, you see here, here's the implementation of how you would do it for a continuous function. Uh, this is actually the old wife2 function. Um, with the old scoring uh, worths here. And this is how you would set up for uh, OD10, which is like an example of uh, how you would um, how you would kind of set it up for a situation where you want to rename what the judgments are called, for one. Uh, change the window sizes and what they're worth. And kind of mess around with how the holds are. Uh, now there's another extra thing here, is this judge by oldest note setting. Now if you'll read this, what this is basically saying is, judge by oldest note changes the way the game scores the taps. Um, by default, it's off, and um, Stepmania and Eterna basically judge the notes by uh, judge your taps based on what is the closest note. Um, other games tend to do it where it judges the oldest note in the hittable window. So that's why we have off, we have false for DP and false for wife too, but on Osu scoring system we turn it on because it's different so what we see here is if we, we're in game we switch to the osu one the uh this little thing here says using reprioritized offsets so sometimes the graph can change uh since this score is really clean um you won't see much of a difference but if i go find another kind of score here We'll see that it can get a little bit different. As you can see, the graph is changing, which means there's something different about it. Not too different, but it does it does actually matter. Uh, in some more particular cases, you can uh, end up with scores that are completely shafted by this change. But this is how you would uh, kind of make it more faithful to the scoring system of your choice. Uh, but yeah, to make a new entry in this, you pretty much just start writing a table. And uh, you have to follow the formats that are laid out in the examples. And it's just a lot to read. Um, so uh, once you make your change, though, uh, let me just give you an example here. I'm going to make a copy of the wife 2 one. And we'll say it's uh, wife 4. Uh, just for funny. This is actually very hilarious. This is a joke. Uh, so we've made our new window and we called it wife to, uh, wife 4 j 9 And it's it's now got a new name. And we also have to add it to this list up here. Alright, so that's done. And we save the file. Now to load it, you either restart the game or you reload the scripts. And to reload the scripts, you hit Control F2. Uh, and then we can restart the screen. You can either leave the uh, screen or come and come back to it, or you can hold F3, hit F6, and hit 2. And then now the system has loaded in a new window, which we can change to. And there's our wife 4 j 9 So uh, that's, that's pretty much how you add them. Uh, the only other thing to keep track of here is any any changes you make to this file, this specific custom Windows config Lua file, they will be lost when you update your game. Uh, this is a direct modification of the theme files. Uh, so you'll want to back that up whenever you uh, update and stuff. Uh, and that's about it. Thanks for watching.